Coming back once again, thanking the Lord for so much. Giving a great shout out to the YouTube family from my daddy, Papa JT, all the way down on Justice in Frankfurt, Germany. And I'm coming back once again, Pastor Taylor, responding back with your other email. Oh, I love how you keep it real. Boy, we need more pastors like you, man. It keeps it real. Stand on what's right and don't mind standing for the word of God. Now, we was talking about pastor's appreciation. Pastors, and uh, you want to say pastor's anniversary. We all know what they are, and we all know what time it is and what goes down. And you said, keep it real? Oh, that's all I know how to do. Now, let me say this off top. To the churches and the pastors that are doing things the right way, God bless you, and may God keep elevating you higher and higher. But to these jacked up preachers with these jacked up members, these jacked up churches, Oh yeah, you might want to cut your camera off again because I'm going to throw it out of the reel. Now, let's talk about these pastors' appreciations, pastors' anniversaries. Now, I'm going to just say this off top. I'm all for you giving honor when honor is due, blessing your pastor. But I'm not for all this robbing folks and all this wrongdoing. Because I'm not here to say how God going to bless the next man because God already told us how he will bless us. If we do things according to his will. Notice what I said, his will, not our will. Now, when we look at these appreciations, see, let me let me say this again. Every, a lot of things we doing now ain't got nothing to do with back in the early church and your show can't support it in scripture. Let me say this. You don't have to wait on no certain day to appreciate your pastor. And it ain't always got to be about how much money you can raise. Now, I'm a minister of music. And I know how it go down. And I hate what I see nowadays. Now, let's first of all talk about the pastor's favorite buddy. Oh, we, we, can we talk about it, Minnie Man? Because I know you can relate. And Pop, you know where I'm going with this. Who is that favorite buddy that one they only call in when it's time to beg for money? That's the only time you're going to see him. And he is called to the church just to be the beggar. And he the one that gets up there started off. I'm going to put in $300. Y'all need to bless y'all, Pastor. I wonder how much of that 300 he take out of there when church is over. And he sits up there and beg for 30 minutes. Some longer than that. Trying to tell you what you can put in. They only call that pastor when it's anniversary time because he's the beggar. He's the master ceremony. He's for to get the thing going. I don't know if I'll be at an appreciation or a begging contest. And then they get up there and they fuss at you. How many of y'all have blessed y'all pastor? How many of y'all ever, ever gave $1,000? What you need to do is for your pastor because we ain't gonna, we ain't gonna move on until we get 1000 and then when you reach 1000 they got to get 1200 Then when you reach 1200 we need to go to 13 Next thing you know, you're over 2Gs. Let me, say, let me say this like this. I done seen folks raise $20,000, $30,000 and up for the pastor. Now, here's when the problem come in play. You done raise twenty thousand, or $30,000 easy. But the church still look like a shack. They took up all this money in the porch ain't even together outside. They took up all this money in the roof leaking. What are you doing with the money and who are you blessing? I know I just made some of y'all mad. Come to church and sit down in your little favorite church with your first lady right beside you. And oh, it's time to collect. But once again, I don't have nothing against what's doing, doing it right. But I'm talking about the abuse and the greed behind these appreciations. And these begging for money pastors get in the pulpit. They only come out to beg. First of all, you don't know what the church has already done for their pastor. And then you're still getting up here, getting angry at folks. I done seen some preachers, they, they, they'll cut the music off and they'll tell y'all, they'll fuss at the current game. Come on, y'all, what in the world is this? $500? Y'all can do better than that. Well, what kind of goal is you trying to reach? How much money are you trying to take up in these churches for your pastor? And when these pastors, some of these pastors get the money, they don't do a damn thing to fix the church with it. Well, JC, that's what the building fund is for. 
Now, this is the problem I got. You done raised $20,000 or $30,000 and up for the pastor, but you got $100 sitting in the building for them. God Almighty. You still got the widow women sitting on the front row. You still got people struggling, and they can't pay their bills, and you ain't going to even buy them a damn sandwich. See, y'all don't, don't want to hear these kind of videos. I know, but I'm going to stand on what's real. And once again, I don't have nothing against nobody, and I'm not calling out no church name. To those who do this, if you don't do this, this video don't apply to you. But the abuse behind these appreciations. And look how they sneak and get some of these minister of music. Well, you, you know, take care of me. When it's your appreciation, I'm going to do the same for you. And what's sad, the people that need to be appreciated ain't even the ones being appreciated. The ones that labor the hardest. The Bible say know those that labor amongst you. And the ones that's doing all the labor, they, they telling you to just pretty much kiss they tail. And you know how the game go, midi man. Oh, next year we're going to be at your church. The one that's begging and begging and begging, then next year your pastor and your choir going to be at their church. And this stuff ain't scripture. It sure ain't about God. Now we done raised up all of this money. And then they got the nerve to send them on trips. This is the problem. And look at all these committees you got at the church now. You should be able to take care of your pastor with your church alone. You got a love committee in there. You got the women's ministry. You got the brotherhood. You got the choir with they dudes and whatever they want to do. You got six or seven auxiliaries in the church. And that ain't even included when the other churches. And then you turn around and invite six or seven more churches. And y'all wonder why they can raise $50,000 easy. Some can raise way more than that. The abuse. And ain't nobody taking care of the church. Ain't even, can't even get a decent piano in there. Can't get the flow fixed. The restrooms falling all through. But they go to show you how much money folks can take up. You know what they're doing? They're taking care of the man of God, but ain't taking care of the house of God. It's done been enough money raised, especially in these Baptist churches. See, this is why the white folks don't do it like this. Y'all just saying, I'm not prejudiced or nothing. I'm just using the term white folk. They might take up offering once a year, twice a year. They ain't doing this begging for money. Having all these bake sales and, and building funds and all this old stuff that we doing. Because if you take care of the house of God right, God will take care of his building, his children. He already has. We the one abusing this. This is the abuse that go on behind these pastors and wives' appreciations. Some of them, man, that's the only time they get happy. And as me being trained as a deacon... To see what deacons do and what trustees do, I'm going to tell you something. It's a lot of crookedness. See, I ain't just a minister of music. I be involved in a lot of different things. I done seen some crooked. I done seen some preachers that start off this, I'm going to put in four, five hundred dollars I done seen them go back there and take that whole 500 back and probably put in a 20 or $5. But they don't want you to know about it. Yeah, I just exposed that. Because while you out there robbing people and fussing at people, you out there practicing, I mean, preaching something you don't even practice. You talking about putting in four, five hundred dollars. I need a hundred people on this side with fifteen hundred dollars. All that mess. And you put in two dollars yourself. And you got the nerve to fuss at the appreciate. Boy, y'all know them. Y'all see them when they come. Oh, here come Reverend such and such. He finna stand in the pulpit and beg for an hour. That stuff ain't about Jesus. And you will be held accountable for that mess. And people so brainwashed and ignorant of the word nowadays. Yeah, you're supposed to treat your pastor nice and take care of. Give people their flowers while they living. See, we always want to make a certain day to do this. Well, your pastor might not even make it to his appreciation. You got preachers that dying right now. Folks is dying every day. And we setting these dates. Didn't Jesus say, do not worry about tomorrow? Give, appreciate folks while they yet living. I told y'all the other video about the preacher that dropped dead in the pulpit. Oh man, see we done made everything about money now. So many people ain't got money because the economy is so down. A lot of folks are getting laid off. People getting laid off. People getting divorced. People are losing their homes and you still in the church begging the hell out of folks. Oh, 
Malachi 3 and 8. Man, I don't want to hear nothing else about no Malachi. That ain't got nothing to do with me, are you? They ain't robbing God. Y'all the one robbing the congregation. This is ridiculous. Pulpit abuse. Oh, man. Appreciation. Oh, let me go get my new suit. I done seen some pastors take, they done took up over $10,000 and they blessed them with five or six suits. And they ain't did nothing to pump them up even more. Once again, I'm not knocking the blessing, but I, my question is, is it coming from God or is it coming from man and woman the wrong way? And so many people done put their preachers on a pedestal now that they done made them higher than God. Forget about the right way. Let's keep doing what's wrong. What's wrong? We've been doing it this long anyway, so leave it like it is. That's what the problem is. That's why I don't fit in with most folks because I don't stand on what's wrong. Oh, this robbing, man. You done took up $30,000 and you ain't even got a driveway outside. You done took up thirty dollars or $40,000 and every time you have church, you got buckets laying all around the church to pick up the water from the roof leaking. Something wrong with that picture, people. Amen, lights. I know. The abuse. And then when it comes time to the minister of music time to get appreciated, oh, they just throw theirs together like it ain't. Oh, just throw theirs together less than a month. It's sad, man. I know a lot of minister of music right now that's getting abused. I'm talking about faithful, humble musicians. The ones that do things right are the ones that's getting abused to the highest. And I know folks don't want to agree with that, but that is the butt-naked truth. That's why pastors get way more appreciated than the minister of music. And sad thing is, if it wasn't for the minister of music, they wouldn't even have a crowd like they have because some of these preachers ain't preaching at all. Not all of them, though. Some of these preachers is preaching what they want to preach, and they don't even know Adam from Noah. But they getting all this money. Well, uh, I make $1,000 a Sunday. I'm making these $800 a Sunday. And in my appreciation, I expect to have at least $20,000. Well, when, when can we expect to get the church fit, fixed? When can we expect to start helping the widow women who done lost, people that done lost their husbands and, and they struggling with their kids? When are we going to start helping the community? You taking up all this money, you ain't helping nobody in the community, not inside of the church. See, that's why I don't have no problem with you appreciating somebody. But how are you doing it? What's the motive behind it? What are the pastors actually doing to the ones that do this? What are they actually doing with all that money? Other than every time you see them, they got a brand new car. They got a brand new suit. They done moved into a bigger house. God Almighty, man, this is ridiculous. The begging, money-hungry preacher that comes at appreciation when it's time to raise all the money, dictating to you what you're going to put in church. They don't even know what you have already done. They don't know what the choir have gave. They don't know what the other auxiliaries have gave, and all they're doing is begging, 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 begging. This ain't no act of God, and I'm going to speak on it and stand boldly on the truth. You better recognize BS from the truth. I keep telling folks, man, and to the churches that are moving forward, once again, this don't apply to you, but I'm talking about these crooks. See, all pastors ain't crooked. All minister of music ain't crooked. But to the ones who know they're doing this, I pray for them. I pray that all this crooked mess stops. But I know it's not. Why do you know that, JT? Well, the whole Bible teaches me. Oh, don't let me even start talking about revelation when judgment starts in the house of God first. And if you keep being a, you keep playing a part of, of helping abuse others, you're going to have to answer to God. Be blessed.